Hello, welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Tuesday, the 6th of June. Uh, D Day, I believe. Um, the anniversary. I am back and thank you for hanging out with me and being patient as I was away for um, the end of last week and the beginning of this week. I was in Ottawa um, learning how to be a good board member. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about um, a reflection from our daily bread. I like I like to use this. It's always got lots of good stuff there. And why reinvent the wheel, right? Um, this is from Saturday, May 27th. And it says, it's, it's, the quote from scripture is from Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 10. Who dares despise the day of small things? And this is written by Patricia Baben, Raybon, and it's called Small But Great. Will I make the Olympics? The college swimmer worried her speed was too slow. But when math professor Ken Ono studied her swim techniques, he saw how to improve her time by six full seconds, a substantial difference at that level of competition. Attaching sensors to the swimmer's back, he didn't identify major changes to improve her time. Instead, Ono identified tiny corrective actions that, if applied, could make the swimmer more efficient in the water, making the winning difference. Small corrective actions in spiritual matters can make a big difference for us too. The prophet Zechariah taught a similar principle to a remnant of discouraged Jews struggling, along with their builder Zerubbabel, to rebuild God's temple after their exile. But not by might nor by power, but by this, my spirit, the Lord Almighty told Zerubbabel. That's from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. As Zechariah declared, who dares despise the day of small things? The exiles had worried that the temple wouldn't match the one built during King Solomon's reign. But just as Ono's swimmer made the Olympics, winning a medal after surrendering to small corrections, Zerubbabel's band of builders learned that even a small, right effort made with God's help can bring victorious joy if our small acts glorify him. In God, small becomes great. And the prayer that Patricia uses says, Point me to small good actions, dear God, that make a big difference in me for you. Small corrective actions. That's powerful for me because I I make a lot of mistakes. I don't know about you, but I make a lot of mistakes. And I have an ego just like everybody else does. And I really hate admitting I make mistakes. I would love to be perfect the first time out of the gate. I get really frustrated when I, you know, I've done something before, I've practiced it and it went really well and I get to go get up there and do it and it's like bang, flat in my face. You know what? Nine times out of ten, since I'm an adult, when I was a kid, yeah, lots of people laughed at me, but we do that to each other as kids, don't we? We're pretty cruel. But as an adult, nine times out of ten, most people don't make fun of me. They don't trash me for making a mistake. They're more concerned about helping me stand up or they're maybe don't even pay attention to it because we recognize mistakes happen. What's the big thing about mistakes is what do we do with them? When we recognize we've made a mistake or we recognize we're not good at something, is it okay to just dwell in that and say, well, I'm not any good at this. I'm never going to do it again. Or do we try again? I think we need to learn from children. Look, looking, look at children. I am hooked on this, this, this YouTube channel about Kobe, the chocolate lab. He just, he reminds me of dude and his, his little buddy, Robert, the baby, and they're sort of growing up together. And Kobe, the dog does not judge Robert when Robert falls down, when Robert's trying to crawl or learning how to stand or learning how to pet Kobe gently <laughs> instead of poking him in the eye. Kobe doesn't bite him. Kobe doesn't bark at him. Kobe's very patient and allows him to try again and again and again. And then when Robert figures out how to do it properly, Kobe's tail goes wild. It's like he's clapping for him and saying, yay, Robert, you did it. Children don't quit once they start learning. How many times do we watch children when they're just beginning to take those steps and they sort of, they've got the, that diapered rump, you know, that gives them that cushioning when they fall down. And they might have a bit of a you know, the lip starts to quiver and the tears might come. But for the most part, they they like, okay, I fell down. Eventually they get back up and they try it again. Or they'll 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 crawl up and they hold on to whatever the edge of the table or whatever and they, they shimmy side to side to side because they learn to get their feet to move the way feet are supposed to move. Their brain is teaching them one foot, other foot, one foot, other foot. They haven't learned balance yet. 
but by standing up and holding on and one foot after the other, they're learning how to walk. And once they get that part down, those small little corrections down, then they learn they can let go. And sometimes they fall and sometimes they don't. But the more they try, the better they get. Until eventually they're able to walk and then watch them start to run. And then blah, 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 flat in the face. And then you might get some tears, but then they'll get back up. And they're, they keep on going until they're able to run. And then they run and they run and they run. If children can do that, if children can take a look at learning and recognize that it's just completely natural, why can't adults, why do we have so much trouble making mistakes? Why can't we recognize that every time we make a mistake, if we learn a little bit more from that, if we change the course, if we alter that, we can become better at what we're doing. We can become the people we're called to be. I think that's really important that we, that we pay attention to that, those small corrections. I sometimes have referred to the fact that sometimes when we make a decision or do something, we just go off a little bit like this and a little bit like this. One degree seems like if you're, you know, you're talking about a 180 degree road here, it's just flat, straight. And you think, okay, well, if we, if we start off and we just veer one degree away, so it's 179 degrees, and the next step is another degree, and another degree, and another degree, eventually the path we take ends up way, way, way far away from this straight path, doesn't it? If we do that if, just slowly, if every time we, we do something, we learn just one tiny thing from the mistake or one tiny thing from how what we did well, but what we could do better or what we said and realize, oh, the people's reaction, I, I hurt that person's feeling. I, I didn't realize that would be hurt, hurtful. I won't do that again. If we do that slowly, we might find ourselves, instead of heading in a direction that leads us, because we've always done it that way, um, leads us to something that we don't want. You know, like if we don't like where we are, what's the point in driving in exactly the same direction because we don't change anything? We're still not going to like where we are when we get there. But if we start changing the direction just one degree at a time, one small correction at a time, we could end up with a vista, a view that is incredibly beautiful. We could end up being so good at whatever it is that we've changed, that we've corrected over and over and over, little tiny bits at a time, that we become wonderful at it, or we, come, become, we can celebrate in how good it becomes, or how much fun it is. We don't have to make big, massive corrections if we realize we're not perfect. What we need to do is figure out how to make those small corrections so that we can work on becoming better. Better as Christians, better at pre being preachers, better at being a teacher or a doctor or a lawyer, or a mom or a dad, better at just being basic human beings. We can get better and we can become all we are called to be if we're willing to just take it one small step at a time. What kind of things do you need to work on getting better at? Mine needs to be patience. I need to work on being more patient. How about you? Because you know what? If we do this together, we'll make ourselves better and we'll make a better world. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.